Sidekick 360's training camp update. We go live to the Titans practice facility where Ryan Tannehill and Julio Jones, uh, you're about to see, uh, working a bit. And this is uh, A.J. Brown, excuse me, not Julio Jones. This is A.J. Brown. Uh, no sign of Julio uh, in, in regards to this. Um, someone did tweet out that this was Julio, and of course Julio... Anyway, nonetheless. Was that was that Paul Koharski that tweeted that out? That's, no, it else? was not Paul. It was not okay. Paul. Uh, PK, though, uh, has tweeted out a lot of accurate reporting and information live from Titans training camp, and he joins us each and every day. Uh, Paul, hope you're doing well. Forced to the porch here. I wanted to be out in the sun, but uh, Terry Porch, who runs the grounds crew and is driving that mower behind me, uh, shooed me up onto this porch, and it's his lawn. So I was told there to get go. off his lawn. <laughs> Old man, get off my lawn. Clint Eastwood now <laughs> mowing the, the lawn, the, the field for the Titans. It's perfect. So there are others right now doing stand-ups on the lawn, but I guess he knows they're not going to be doing it for an hour. Okay. Well, you know what? We're live from Titans training camp, and uh, our show goes to one. Uh, Paul, your, uh, your thoughts on Julio Jones not being out there today. We, we mentioned yesterday that he left early. It's being described as rest. Do you take anything into the fact that he wasn't out there? No. I mean, I think yesterday when he tweaked, whatever he tweaked, um, I would have said it, it would be a long shot for him to be out uh, out here today. Uh, yesterday was the first team work he did, so he might have been scheduled for a day off today anyway um, had he not tweaked it. Obviously, we got to monitor it. We didn't have Mike Vrabel today because we had Shane Bowen. Um, the Titans are, are – trying to juggle and facilitate as many people in as little time as possible for us. So that works out well in a lot of ways, but it doesn't work out well in terms of being able to ask Mike Vrabel on a day like today, uh, what's up with Julio Jones, um, which wouldn't have been a media answer anyway. So, you know, we're going to monitor him day by day. You know, uh, if we see him, uh, you know, even walking around a little bit mm -hmm. tomorrow, that'll be a good sign. The longer he's inside and unseen, the more you have to fear that the, the tweak was something more than something more than very little. But uh, for right now, um, I, I'm still not going to read too much into it. More opportunity for Marcus Johnson, for Chester Rogers, who I think are the two guys who've done the most to elevate themselves. I'd have more concern really about Josh Reynolds, who we haven't seen since he dropped out, I think, midway on Thursday. And uh, you asked me about him last week, and I didn't have a lot to say uh, since then, you know, reviewing some tape that I had on my phone. Um, you know, there was one rep where he was coming right at me in, in one of those uh, end zone one-on-ones where he didn't come off the line very explosively, came right at me in the corner, uh, did not complete a catch, and looked like a guy that just didn't have everything. Now, I don't know if he injured something or if he's just – carrying whatever he had during the off season. But uh, I'd be a little bit, cons bit concerned about Josh Reynolds right now, though obviously they felt like he had a good enough bill of health to enter training camp without being on, uh, you know, NFI or PUP. We've seen a rash of injuries uh, with the Colts. So I say rash, but two big time players with the Colts Don't be uh, rash. with injuries. And, um, but Paul, I, maybe I'm wrong here, but I, I think this is really bad. You've got Julio Jones injured a lot a year ago. I don't think it's a coincidence that he leaves the field yesterday tweaking something, and then he's not out there today. Again, this is early August. What matters is that Julio Jones is available that's in right. September. But when I start seeing receiver that's played a number of years tweaking something early in training camp, I, I don't know how often that becomes nothing throughout the season and not something that could re-aggravate itself at any point, maybe I'm reading too much into it, but w what do you think about moving forward? Is this, is this going to be the question every single day with Julio Jones? I, I mean, I, it's too early to say. I, I think I counted yesterday. It's 41 or 43 days uh, until the opener. That's an awful long time. So, uh, again, I, I, I think this work with Ryan Tannehill, you know, the, the 10 minutes – that he and A.J. Brown are doing is probably the most valuable stuff of what he's doing. It's uh, uh, no contact, no defender. Um, you know, they're not worried about stuff like that. They're, they're worried about the timing and the rhythm and the relationship with the quarterback more than anything else. 
Uh, you know, Derrick Henry is the wrong example because he's not a guy with any kind of injury history. But today was the first day in pads, and I thought, you know, even not symbolically, more than symbolically, but, you know, for, you know the first play of the first padded team period is going to be a run. And they handed the ball to, to Darrington Evans today, and Derrick Henry wasn't in team period again and hasn't been. Taylor Lewan hasn't been in a team period. And I think, uh, you know, they're thinking all along is September 12th, September 12th. Uh, I don't think it's any different with, uh, with Julio Jones. And if he suffered a tweak here, I mean, it would be hard based on what we've seen. And a lot of us talked, you know, we saw it from all different angles and anything. Is it possible it was something significant? Yes. You know, uh, 19 out of 20 times when we see a guy do that, is it significant? No. So we just have to wait for more information. And that information is probably not going to come out of the mouth of Mike Grable. It's going to be in the formula when we see, uh, when we see Julio Jones out here again. And like, like you're saying, Chad, every day, that he's not out here will lead us to more speculation that is something bigger than we thought. Paul, I know you you spoke with uh, Shane Bowen, as the media did today. Um, give us some of the big takeaways there from what Bowen had to say, including the one big area where he's already noticed a big difference in this def- defensive unit compared to last year's group. Well, he's liking uh, walking around, you know, and, uh, and – being able he he thinks it's important that guys see him seeing them you know during an individual period as opposed to only in the meeting room and reviewing film last year when he was coaching the outside linebackers in addition to the defensive coordinator job without the title so i I think that's uh, a significant element to this he said it can go from the meetings you know and hear um the defensive backs talk about uh, their approach or their vision of one thing and then go into the linebacker meeting here the same thing came up and say hey next door here's how the uh, cornerbacks are doing the exact same thing um, and so there's a certain smoothness to that kind of stuff that he wasn't necessarily able to have last year while he was coaching the outside linebackers so that's part of it um You know, communication, I don't have that quote in front of me, Hutton. You might have it on your phone. I I thought this was the biggest thing he said. I can actually have it on my phone here. I thought this was the biggest thing that he said. Uh, If we are 100% before the ball is snapped, then they've got to beat us. Too many times last year we weren't ready to go. And that's somewhat self-indicting, right? And we heard time and time again about how they they weren't coordinated and how they weren't, um, weren't communicating well enough, weren't ready to go. Um, so I, I appreciate the, the candor there, and I think that's a good defensive mindset. You know, that's what you hear most good defenses say. If we're ready, if we're on our game, they've got to beat us. This isn't necessarily true in today's league, right? The offense generally is holding the cards. But you want a defense to, to think like that, and I don't think this defense was thinking like that at all last year. And then he said, you know, you take last year's things and we're no longer talking about last year's failures on third down. We're talking about this year's emphasis, this year's emphasis, third down, red zone, the things we're emphasizing now. We're not talking about emphasizing them because of our failures in those departments last year. We're just talking about them being emphasis and points of emphasis now and things that we have to do well now. Paul, today was day one of pads, but uh, I'm sure Vrabel eased into day one of pads. What stood out to you in a practice that can be a bit more physical, albeit if they're eased in or not, because of the full pad aspect? Well, it was another defensive day. A defense, uh, you know, gradually has kind of taken this thing over, uh, and I think it's less and less because the offense is, uh, is not making the moves. I know Lance Lee is getting very jealous looking at that uh, that mower behind him. He wants that very badly for his house. Um, uh, defense is playing pretty well. I, I think Jack Rabbit Jenkins kind of coming alive the last couple of days has been a big part of that. Jeffrey Simmons is really uh, making some plays running to the ball. He chased Ryan Tannehill to the sideline today on one play that he then threw complete. It was either Des Fitzpatrick or Cameron Batson who caught the ball running hard out of the end zone, and we couldn't decide if he got his feet in or not. It would have been a spectacular play if he did. I thought probably not in real speed, real time. It could be wrong, Um, but it's a really athletic, aggressive play. Uh, 
Monty Rice is somebody that Vrabel mentioned, you know, needing to get the pads on. And he's a guy that did some, some thudding today. Um, and I think I called him AJ, but I'm pretty sure it's BJ Bello um, had the hit of the day on Darrington Evans. Uh, Darrington Evans caught a ball in the flat and it was kind of one of those moments where you turn and get popped. Um, Bello, you know, put a good shoulder into him, uh, sent him backwards but it was a play where um, a sack would have been made, you know, if they were calling it technically. Somebody had broken through on the blitz and gotten gotten to, uh, I think, Logan Woodside as he let the ball go. But, you know, there's a different sound to a training camp practice with pads on where you hear some, some clattering. Um, and I think guys, uh, to a degree, I asked Evans, Rashawn Evans this, certainly the case for me, still make the mistake of anticipating the first day of pads, you know, uh, I wasn't expecting a goal line period, but I was expecting some one-on-one -on -one stuff. No, it, it, you know, it's just like the, the first day of camp is an acclimatization period and it takes a couple of days. First day of pads is an acclimatization period and it's going to be a couple of days. So they didn't break out the, uh, the traditional uh, receivers and cornerbacks going one-on-one -on -one over here and uh, offensive and defensive linemen going one-on-one -on -one over there, which is always a highlight. I imagine they'll build up to that and maybe we'll see it um, in the next couple of days. Hopefully, it's always a highlight. Paul, you mentioned that yesterday there was a renewed energy uh, with the entire team at practice. Was there anyone that stuck out to you that maybe wasn't quite as energized in practice, but now that the pads went on, you saw a different pep in their step in today's practice? Um, I, I don't know out if i've got any specifics on that i i do think and hut you're probably planning on getting to this later but it, here's a good uh entree into it the, the defense is talking and we can circle back to this talking so much chat about swagger 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 i i, I think it's a good thing that they're talking about and they want to have it but I, I think to a degree it's kind of a little bit like false bravado like how much swagger do i want you to have before you show me you can go out and stop somebody on third down yes after exactly. last year's after last year's disaster so I, I i don't i mean i like that they're hyped and bouncing around and cheering guys making plays and stuff but i don't need you to be flexing and, and telling me what a great defense you are after you gave up 50.9 percent or whatever it was on third down last year before i see you stop somebody on third down um, or, or with 19 sacks before I see you, you know, get that number, you know, up. Well, I, mean, I like the, I like the chatter. I, I want a defense that's going to talk a little bit and have some confidence. But I'm with you. Like at, at some point, it's almost like they're talking themselves up into the moment when they actually get a chance to prove it in week one. That I mean, we we won't know until then. We didn't know about how bad and terrible this defense was last year at this time, to be honest. So. Uh, it, it, it's hard to tell. What what you can tell, though, are the new additions, Paul, and how that's factoring into some of the swagger and confidence. Where, where is Jackrabbit Jenkins in the mix for what you're describing? Is, is he a big focus point for bringing that swagger to the group? Yeah, he's getting there. Uh, he's, he's certainly uh, – look, Vrabel said energy comes from production, and Jackrabbit Jenkins has started to, to produce – um, so there's buzz around him and people are looking to him for leadership with Farley and, uh, and with that group. Also, you know, you don't know what's going on behind the scenes here. And I don't think it's all just natural flow every day. Like Bayard said, and this was very interesting when he spoke a couple days ago, that um, Vrabel asked him to be quiet for a day or two. He, because Bayard is one of the most talkative guys out there, right? And so Vrabel wanted to see what happens when Kevin Bayard doesn't talk. Who else? How, how do other guys react? Who picks up the slack and stuff like that? I, I think that's fascinating to see what Amani Hooker does, um, and to see what the rest of the defense does when maybe your loudest captainy guy steps back and creates a little bit of a void. So I don't know if they're playing any games like that or if they have during this camp at all. But I think uh, that's an interesting experiment when you're trying mm -hmm. to have guys find their niches in terms of those roles. Well, let's also look at it from this angle, too. You know, we've seen a rebuilt defense 
what, six new starters uh, on, the, on the defensive side of the 11? Six or seven out of 12. Yeah, and, and big in the secondary, which was needed. I think some of the talk right now, the, the literal talk on the practice field, and again, I haven't been out there, is, is that they're almost not just rebuilding their roster on that side, they're rebuilding their confidence level. It was third and 14 at times last year, and I'd turn around and be like, this is a first down. This defense is going to give this play up because they just knew they were. Um, there, there was no confidence in that group, and I think you have to rebuild a bit of that swagger and mentality going into the season. So I don't, I don't hate that they're chattering a lot. I, I love that they're making big plays uh, because of how good we know this offense is. But I, I'm with you. I, I do want to see these same guys produce in these preseason games leading up to week one. And, uh, again, it's funny because that rebuilding confidence on the defense kind of goes hand in hand with a couple of the problems the Titans had last season, in particular at the end of last season, like when Corey Davis wasn't there in the second half of the Baltimore game. Well, Julio Jones isn't out there, uh, not, you know, for, set the, the tweaking aside, right? They're not using him in team, really, very much. Um, just that last day, yesterday, was the first time. And so as good as Marcus Johnson and Chester Rogers have been, we're not seeing Julio Jones or Josh Reynolds. And so, you know, you're building some defensive swagger against guys who are competing technically for the fourth spot. They're not defending Derrick Henry. They're defending Darrington Evans and, and Hall, right? They're, yes. And Taylor, Taylor Lewan's not out there. And, uh, and, and Raidens isn't, you know, necessarily operating high. They're looking at, at Kendall Lamb and, and a guy that we haven't talked about much, David Quesman. Um, so as good as this offense is going to be, um, it's making mistakes right now. Um, defense is usually ahead of offense and this is not the frontline offense really. You know, Luke Stocker's been here for two days. Jeff Swaim is out also. There's another frontline guy that's out. It's a little bit of a piecemeal offense right now. So it's good time for the defense to build confidence. It's not playing against, uh, you know, an offense that's expected to be top three, top five. It's missing a lot of pieces. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you're notified every time OutKick 360 goes live. We are live weekdays, 11 a.m. Central, noon Eastern, right here across the OutKick network. And while you're at it, like this video and let us know what you think in the comments below.